senses that had a hard time tackling you. You free man. When the banking and insurance industry turned bad, I chose to withdraw an investment I had deposited into a certain institution. They said, sir, the manager would like to see you for a moment before you follow through on this transaction. I said, sure enough, bring the manager, let me talk to him. And he tried to convince me to leave my investment in their bank. And I attempted to tell the manager, listen now, when I made the deposit, I never intended for you to keep it. It's my deposit. And I went on to remind him that, listen now, you've, you've made a little, you've used my money, you've used the interest to, to build schools and to help students get through college. And you've, you, you've built hospitals on my deposit. I know some of us, we don't want to see Mac go. But he was God's deposit. I know many of us are mad that he's gone. But God says, I never intended for you to keep him. He always belonged to me. But we come tonight to give God thanks for the interest. Thank you for the interest. You put our corn state on the map. Look out. Al Cohen on the front of Sports Illustrated. Thank you for the interest. You helped turn the franchise around. Thank you for the interest, AFC Championship. Thank you for the interest. Just one yard short from a Super Bowl right before that. We thought you would tackle, but boy, you got up and ran. I mean, thank you for the interest. All oh, the money you put into Mississippi and Tennessee to help young people. Thank you for the interest. The community is better, and young people have hope because of this man. And thank you for the interest, Tyler, Trent. You, you, you're the interest, and the people only knew the man, Steve McNair. We will call you by your name, Steve, a man who carried boxes of relief aid to victims in Hurricane Katrina. Steve, a man with pain in his body, but willed himself to places many of us could never imagine to prove that champions never quit. Steve, a man who tried, failed, got up, fell down, tried again. Steve, a man who touched this city like no other athlete in the history. Steve, a man who inspired our children to believe. Steve, a man who smiled at adversity and chuckled at pain. If you didn't know him, we are his family, friends, and fans. We say, wow, if you only knew. We shall forever honor his legacy. We shall forever thank God for his life. And although Mississippi is his home, Tennessee will forever call him one of our favorite sons. Thank you for representing Tennessee with such pride. You were like such a hero to so many kids. Our heroes are not supposed to die. They're supposed to live forever. You were like a superhero, strong, conqueror, a warrior. You wore number nine. And how ironic that we honor your memory on this ninth day in the year 2000. And nine. A warrior. Eddie has fallen. A true titan. Remember, Tyler, the day my hero died. Trent, I remember the day when I was a little boy that Batman died. 
The Joker and the Penguin played a trick on him. They took Batman and took his utility belt. They had Robin locked up in the safe. And they had Batman in a building. Time bomb was ticking. And the TV played that unkind trick to be continued. I went to school the next day because I loved me some Batman. I had a Batman hat, Batman bike, Batman notebook, Batman pencil. I loved me some Batman. And I went to school the next day and the teacher was teaching, but I have to tell you, all I thought about was how Batman was going to get out of this. And after the last bell rung, I didn't even catch the bus. I beat the bus home, running home, because I wanted to know, how was Batman going to get out of this? And as I stood there in front of the television, watching it as it continued, meanwhile, and they rehearsed what had happened to Batman, and Batman was... Locked up in a building, the time bomb was ticking, Robin was locked up in another room. They, they, they had taken Batman's utility belt and, and, and the Joker and the Penguin were taking over the city and it looked like Batman had died. But as the series continued, Batman got out and was standing on top of Gotham City with his cape looking over the city. And this bothered me because I couldn't figure it out in my little mind, my adolescent mind. And so I went to my dad and I said, Daddy, you got to tell me because I don't understand. I don't understand. He said, what, son? I said, Daddy, they, they had Batman. And Batman was locked in a safe and the time bomb was ticking. And they took his utility belt and, and, and the joke and the penguin were taken. They said it was over. Daddy, he was dead. But Batman got out. I'd seen Batman in a whole lot of pictures. I saw him with the Batmobile demobilized at the bottom of the ocean. I'd seen Batman in burning buildings, but never had I seen Batman in a fix like that. And I asked my daddy, Daddy, please tell me how my hero got out. I need to know. Because Daddy, look at him. He's standing over the city. Look at him with his cape. Daddy, Batman is still alive. Tell me how Batman got out. And I come tonight to tell you what my father told me that Batman got out because it was written in the script I thank God that I know Steve is alright because tonight it is still written in the script we give God glory for his life we give God praise for his contribution and we pray God's strength among you. We thank God for his life. We thank God for his legacy. We thank God for all of you that have come to share. Tonight, before I close this, before I ask for the funeral directors to come, as I pondered in my spirit this moment, cannot let this moment go by because the Lord said to me to pray for every NFL player in this place